introduction that our um, server or MC <laughs> said this morning uh, regarding about not wanting to open your email <laughs> because at Orange County Buddhist Church, even though we do have a calendar, it does change and it can change at the blink of an eye. And so I am always, you have new mail. <laughs> have been times when I have had to, uh, even when I was um, not assigned anything on a Sunday morning, though I was helping to set up for meditation service, the uh, person who was assigned to do meditation at the last minute could not make it. So guess who got to do meditation at the spur of the moment? Anyway, it's good to be back in Vista. Um, I'm so glad that <coughs> the spreadsheet timed my arrival with Annette's flute playing is so beautiful and soothing, and Annette, thank you so much for, for playing the flute this morning for our meditation. So this morning, I would like to spend a few minutes talking about a concept or an attitude that you probably have heard and maybe even know what it means, but do you use it in your daily practice? A couple of weeks ago, actually last week, when I was doing Wednesday meditation, I brought this up. And uh, because we have new people there, I kind of knew what the answer would be when I asked, how many of you have heard or know the, the term shikata ganai, or another version is shoganai? Of course, nobody there knew it, so I was very happy because then I could explain it to them. But I predict here at Vista Buddhist Temple, you know what Shikata Gadai means. You know it very well. But I think I have a little twist on it, a little different perspective. So here we go. First of all, it's been one heck of a summer, hasn't it? I've heard about heat domes. I've heard about the new normal, the horrific wildfires. But it's the temperature, the humidity, and the high temps. And actually, although I don't like it and I complain, I'm very grateful when I reflect on the fact that the temperatures and the humidity and my being uncomfortable and not at ease is a wonderful opportunity for me to reflect on Shikata Ganai. The actual meaning, in case you were wondering, it is beyond my control so it cannot be helped. It is what it is. So we do not always have control over the situations or the discomforts in our lives. And maybe you could even come up with one, one single word for Shikata Ganai. It's very contemporary. A lot of our young people use it. I don't like it, but it's whatever. Whatever. I grew up in Hawaii, and I recall my, my childhood days growing up as one local kid in, in the islands. And of course, I did not know about Shikata Ganai. I didn't know about Shin Buddhism. Uh, my mother, my Korean mother, who rebelled as a Catholic, took us to an Episcopalian church. And so I was raised as an Episcopalian, which is not much different from being raised as a Catholic. But as a kid growing up in Hawaii, you of course speak the pidgin language. And we did use terms like, if can, can. If no can, no can. <laughs> if can, can. If no can, no can. That's called pidgin philosophy. <laughs> it means, if I can get to it, I will. If not, I cannot. Another phrase that we used all the time was, ask why hard. Translation, that's why hard. <laughs> and the definition of that, of course, is that is what makes things difficult. And as I was growing up in the Episcopal Church, I was in, of all things, a youth group called God's Gang. <laughs> <laughs> And 
that's where I heard and learned the theological version of Shikata Ganai. It's in God's hands now. But back to Shikata Ganai, or if you prefer, Shogunai. To me, it's an acceptance of the situation just as it is. And when you think back to the popularity of Shikata Ganai recently, it was all due to what came out of World War II. Because it enabled your Issei and Nisei ancestors to endure the, the conditions of camp life during World War II. And this endurance, this spiritual attitude, it was a driving force behind turning desert soil into gardens or creating ponds in front of their barracks and clearing away the weeds to construct baseball fields. And then when the war was over and many returned to discover that all of their property was lost, there was a shogunite attitude that enabled the rebuilding process and to guide their children to success and respect in their society. <clears throat> so due to Buddhism's popularity in the West today, and its obvious influence, because there's so many of you here, Shogunai has gotten a lot of uh, media coverage. Some positive, mostly positive, but some negative. And so here's where I want to divert a little bit and tie Shikata Ganai in with the teachings of Buddhism. Because I believe they're strongly connected. And I personally believe that introducing the Shogunai attitude to all, whether you're a first timer or a long timer, is a more effective approach to understanding Buddhism, especially Jodo Shinshu or Shin Buddhism say in the short language. Now, use your imaginations. If you were asked to define or even defend your choice of Buddhist practice, how would you respond? Have you ever had to do that? As a minister or assistant, we get asked that all the time by new people, and even by some of the uh, old timers. Maybe they're just testing us. So let me give you one example of what I would call a more classic or traditional approach. And this is a very high level, kind of my summary of, of responses that I have heard from other ministers or MAs when a new person comes <coughs> to our temple for the first time and they ask a very simple question. And I kind of stand in the background and those who are more type A take over the, uh, the response, and I can just see their eyes blazing over and everything just going over their head. So here's how it might sound. Well, Buddhism is a way of life. It's a philosophy, and it's a religion of awareness. Rhetorical question here, what do we become aware of? Well, we become aware of the principles of existence, the Dharma or the teachings, the truths by which we think and conduct our lives. But the teachings are hard to understand and grasp. Why is that? And then you utter some esoteric shin terms like Amida Buddha, the expression of oneness, which is formless, beyond human understanding, and that this oneness out of deep compassion took form as Bodhisattva Dharmakara, who eventually becomes Amida Buddha to establish the Pure Land and to lead all sentient beings to Buddhahood. Would that response resonate with you as to why you chose Buddhism <laughs> as your way of life, your philosophy, your religion, your practice? Honestly, I've heard this said to newcomers by some of our MAs who I will not name. <laughs> but I'd rather stand in the back and shake my head. And 
of course, we never see that newcomer again. <laughs> <laughs> now, what if you understood Shikata Ganai or Shogunai enough that you could answer with an, an approach that reflects the Shogunai principles? It might sound like this. Well, to be born in the human life means our life does not always go as we wish. Who can disagree with that? We will encounter disease due to birth, aging, sickness, death, separation from loved ones, not getting what we want, or maybe getting what we thought we wanted, interacting with disagreeable people, physical and or mental disease, and others can go on and on. Now saying the above might sound negative, but acknowledging the truth of the human condition might help us to endure the hardships of life and focus positive energies on a path of compassion and accept that in the moments of everyday life, we will encounter situations beyond our control. And it is only with the Shikata Ganai attitude that we are able to embrace forgiveness, focus on the here and now, which is the present moment, and realize that spiritual change is possible in the now of our practice. We can accept reality because we know we do not have control over every situation that we encounter. Now with that response, at least tweak the curiosity of a newcomer who might say, yeah, Buddhism might have a, a method that I can resonate with. It's not all academic, esoteric. It is something that will impact about the Shikata Ganai attitude, there was one of my favorite quotes that came out of World War II. And I'm not surprised who said it because she was very close to the president of World War II. She was his wife, Eleanor Roosevelt. And she said, no one can make you feel inferior. No one. conclude with a personal story. Uh, the year 2012 was quite a memorable year for me. In January of 2012, I, along with three other uh, Orange County Buddhist folks, received certification as a minister assistant by then social Kochanobui. And shortly after that certification, our daughter called and said that her then husband decided he did not want to be married to her any longer, and she had a week to move out and find a new place to live. It was also in January of 2012 that my mother decided she could no longer live by herself in Hawaii, and that she accepted my sister's invitation to live with her in Las Vegas. And so my sister and I were flying back and forth, helping my mom clean out, pack up all the things you do when you have to leave a house that you've lived in for over 50 years. And in between all that, we were dealing with our daughter's emotional breakdown. And on top of all that, our son, who lived in France with his wife and young daughter, who was only six, have been battling a rare form of cancer for the last five years or so. In 2012, his cancer escalated to a point where even the chemo was not doing anything. And so he was mostly hospitalized. And so in between listening to our daughter and trying to help her, in between trying to get adjusted to being a minister assistant at Orange County Jewish Church, in between trying 
to Hawaii to help my mom and then trying to get to France to visit our son. It was a trying time. And I had just learned about Shikata Ganai. And it was Shikata Ganai that I kept coming back to um, <clears throat> over and over and over. Um, because Paris, France is so far away, it's halfway around the world, Alice and I took turns, we kind of tag team. I would go over for a few weeks, then I'd come home, and then she'd go over for a few weeks, and I'd go to Hawaii in between all that. And then. So in July, I was there in the beginning. I came home. Alice went over. And on July 10th, I got a phone call from Alice saying that Andrew's doctor says, you better get back here right away. OK, so I called Erin, our daughter who lives in Portland, booked her a flight down to Orange County. From Orange County, we got on a flight to go back to France. And as we were flying over the Atlantic, Andrew passed away. So when we arrived the morning of the 12th, we were greeted by tears and embraces and so sorry, so sorry. And I just kept thinking, Shikata Ganai, Shikata Ganai. Yes, I was angry. Yes, I was upset. And all the family that was gathered around, mostly in shock because it was so unfair. He was only 37. He had a young daughter, six years old. He had a promising career in journalism. His wife, Kim, was pregnant with twins, which are going to be born a few weeks later. It's not fair. Why, why, why? And of course, at first, I agreed with them. And then I gradually began to think about Shikata Ganai. And everyone knows that I was a Buddhist, or I am a Buddhist. I was at that time, too. <laughs> and that I had just became certified as a minister assistant to them that meant, gosh, you're ordained. I said, no, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, a, I'm just a phony, I'm just a pretend. <laughs> but could you say something at his memorial? Could you at least bring some comfort because everyone is just so upset. And so I talked about Shikata Ganai in a very high level way. And it resonated with them because they realized what happened was totally beyond their control. I respect your emotional reaction to it. I understand it. It's normal. But you can't dwell in that space. You have to accept, and then you have to move on. You have to make the best of an unpleasant and that's what I've learned on the Buddhist path since 2012. There are many times I complain. I complain when I get a red light. And then I remember, you fool, if you didn't get the red light, then how could the other cars who are crossing your path, how can they go? They're, they're going to be stuck there. So be grateful you got the red light because it allows them to go. And then you'll get the green light. It'll be your turn. That's cooperation. And so. Shikata Ganai, on things that cannot be helped, I think is a much better segue into what Buddhism is trying to teach us. I, Alice said, you better not say this, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Shikata Ganai is a more useful mantra to learn than Namo Amida Buddhism. Well, I'm not saying don't say Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu will come later as your spiritual, as you mature spiritually. But when I first came to Shin Buddhism, first I never heard of Shin, I never even heard of Namo Amida Butsu. It was even hard to say. So I can empathize with newcomers when we chant, 
meditation, and we'll forever. And they come up to us afterwards. And says, How was that you were mumbling? <laughs> what does it mean? How does it sound? How do you say it? And I said, Well, <laughs> let's take it slow and easy. To me, Shikata Ganai would be much easier for someone to hear for the first time and say, Oh, Shikata Ganai. It has a nice ring to it. Or even Shogunai. And the meaning, you can explain what it means, and it will relate, it will relate to them. Who can explain what Namo Amida Butsu means? It's very personal. Reverend Harada won't even give anyone a direct answer. And he sent a Ellen Crane last week. Was she here, was it last week? She gave a DEC course on uh, Namo Amida Butsu. Maybe she had the right answer, or maybe she has it the only answer. I'll have to ask her when I see her this afternoon. But Namo Amida Butsu, I know it's the core of Shin Buddhism. And I say it to myself all day long, too. Unconsciously, I'm saying it. So when someone asks me about, oh, you're a Buddhist, what, what school would you say? Well, Shin Buddhism, and they never heard of Shin Buddhism. Well, tell me about Shin Buddhism. And I go right past Namo Amida Butsu, and I go to Shikata Ganai and what it means. Because that one phrase, up to this point in my spiritual path, has changed me more than anything else in Buddhism. So I want to conclude with a quote from a very highly respected person in the Shin faith, who's retired, Reverend Masao Kodani. Most of you have heard of Kodani, Sensei. In one of his essays, he says, for, an, for, a, <coughs> for authentic religion, one doesn't go shopping for a religion that agrees with you, but for one that changes. To me, Buddhism, along with Shikata Ganai, for me personally, has had a tremendous impact on my life since the year 2012. Please join me.